Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador, and we are at your side virtually today. So, super fun project for you. Before we go into that, be sure to say hi, say where you're from. We are streaming on Brother's YouTube and Facebook pages, and leave all your comments. The social team will be in there answering for you, and I'll be in the chat too. All right. So Kathy Candy has got a super cool little techniques, projects to show you. She always does. So we're so excited to have her up here. Kathy, how are you? I'm doing well. And you? Oh, very good. For those of you that don't know Kathy, she's a brother, Brenna, or brother educator for <laughs> many, many, many years. And I know many of you might have gotten the surger, the airflow surger for maybe Santa dropped it under your tree. <laughs> if you did. <laughs> Don't forget to register your machine because you get free access to a class that Kathy and I and Kathy Stipe did. And I, I still, that class is amazing. 14 weeks of great lessons. So you don't want to miss that. Yeah. So Kathy, you're not working on the serger today though. What are you doing today? Uh, today I'm on the Stellar 2 and we're doing sewing and I'm hopefully going to give you a few tips. <laughs> Uh, just a few little sewing tips, uh, nothing um, outrageous, I don't think, but a few things. We're going to just do a little uh, like a bean bag and show you how to wrap your corners to get nice corners and how to sew in. So when you turn it, that seam allowance goes inside and it makes it easy to close up. Oh, nice. That, then, by the way. I cannot think of any time you've ever been on the show and we didn't pick up some amazing tips. You're full of them. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And then uh, uh, now some people like their dog eared pillows. Uh, they have little dog ears or big dog ears. It all depends. Basset hound or, you know, <laughs> little perky dogs. Uh, but some people don't like the dog ears. And so uh, there is a method that you can do to get rid of the, your dog ears. So when you sew your pillow, uh, you won't have the dog ears. Okay, and, so you might have to explain to someone what a dog ear is. Yes, well, I got some. Um, okay, so if you look here, do you see here how they poke up? That's your dog oh, yeah. ears. If you don't want them, these here, there's a way to smooth out those and so it doesn't poke up. Does that make sense? It sure does. And I just had to ask that because I could see some people saying, wait a minute, what am I going to do to my dog's ears? <laughs> Yeah, now see this this one isn't eared so much, but it, it does have a little bit. So it has a, a little bit. But we'll uh, show you a, a, some way to take those down and not make them so big. Sounds good. And then the last thing I want to show is uh, on your borders, on your quilt, we usually just sew the border on the top, border on the bottom, and the sides. And so this is mitered borders. So I'm going to show you a technique to um, miter your borders on your quilt. So you can see here how this is mitered. Here's my quilt, and I've got this mitered. It's just a nice, different method to do instead of just the straight. And it just uh, it adds, especially with the stripes, because then you wow, have the sure. Do you see how so nice is that it is? A, few, a few different fabrics there then, right? Yeah. So I did, I did, I put my border together before. Usually we put a stripe on, we put a strip on and then our next strip and then our next strip. But with this, I pieced them all together and then put them on the quilt all at one time. Oh, wow. And, yeah, then, that's and then mitered the corners. I, I figured we'd get a little Valentine's Day in here just to get a head start. Hey, we're, we like starting early. In fact, I, think I should probably, now that I'm I'm still wrapping, this is terrible, but I am actually still sending a few different Christmas cards. I think I better start now for next year. Exactly. Well, we always say that, but, you know, <laughs> people are happy to get whatever they get whenever. Oh, I love that. I love you, Kathy. You just make me feel so good about that. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you take it away. All right. Well, thank you. All right, we are going to start with uh, just the little pouch, the little bean bag, and I am going to switch cameras and go on over to the machine. So let's uh, come to my settings here. 
She's yeah. gonna switch that while she switches that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Social team will be answering those and we can see that great. All right. I don't want to trip over my cords here. So here we go. So this is this is the bean bag. And you can see, I I hope you can see that you have some really nice corners on this. So that the that is a method called wrapping your corners. And so you have a really nice corner on it. And then at the bottom here, you sew off here a little bit. And then this takes that seam right inside so you can finish it off with no problem at all. So we're going to start with, um, well, this, this one shows you the corners better. So here, okay, there you go. So you can see a nice corner here. And then this one I haven't sewn up, but you can't even see. There we go. So it's just right here is where the opening is. And it just tucks in there really, really nice with this method. All right. So let's get sewing. Now, I like to, and uh, one thing that I probably would do if I hadn't thought about it is put right sides together. Um, <laughs> I had them wrong sides together, so I would sew that, but that's okay. You know, we're not going to. Bean bags are not um, something that you have to worry worry too much about. So I have got my. I'm going to take my needle, and I'm going to left right shift it all the way over to the right. So my needle is right inside the foot. If you if you look at your feed dogs. There's an opening here, and that's seven millimeters. So when I take my needle all the way to the right, it's going to be right here at the edge. So the needle is not going to deflect too much, and you really get a nice stitch. I know when we, um, the default on most machines is off to the left, and we, we, we don't like that. We like it in the center. But the reason they do that is that that's the, side on the other side of the seven millimeters so your needle doesn't deflect as much so there's a reason that they do it not that we like it but there is a reason all right so i'm going to i don't know if you can see the laser light here but i have my laser light on for the edge of my foot and uh this is a quarter inch if i take my needle all the way to the right with the end foot the edge of the foot is a quarter inch we all have our special uh, quarter inch things, a uh, quarter inch foot with the flange, uh, a regular quarter inch foot. I kind of like this, so it, whatever makes you smile and happy is to get your quarter inch the way you want it. <laughs> I love that. Everyone does have their own, don't they? <laughs> yes, exactly. So I'm just going to sew down and sew off. So in case anyone isn't following, she is sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge all the way off the fabric. Now when I turn this, I'm not going to just start sewing. I'm going to take where my quarter inch is and I'm going to fold that forward. So I'm going to fold it forward. Oh, you can see that I sewed rotten, but that's okay. So I'm going to start here right where that seam is and put that under the needle and start sewing again. So that's called a wrapped edge. And what that does is, when I go to turn this, you see this is already turned down. I don't have to do clipping. So when I go to turn this, I'm going to take my hand here and I'm going to put my thumb up inside and take this and wrap it over with my index finger. And when I bring it out, do you see that gorgeous point? Wow, look at that. Beautiful. It really is nice. And, it, you know, you don't have to. Sometimes I didn't like the clipping. It kind of bothered me. But uh, this way, when you wrap the corner like that, it just it gets all that bulk sewed down. So you're good to go. It's a perfect point. Perfect corner. So then you're going to do the same thing again. Put it under your needle and sew. Now that I didn't get right to the corner, so I'm going to back stitch a little bit, but that's okay. 
There we go. So there's always a solution to our madness. So then I am going to sew off. I'm going to use my scissors in one more time. And from here. And start again. Except I've already done this side. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn. Because I need my opening. So I'm going to turn this and I'm going to sew off. And then I'm going to back stitch because I don't want it to come undone when I take it off. Then I'm going to move down and I'm going to sew in a quarter of an inch. And you're going to say, well, how far in is a quarter of an inch? Well, I I was messing around the other day and I was playing with things and I, I found my quarter inch tape. And I start using it for a lot of things. And just as a marker, so I don't have to get out my tape measure, which I can never find, my ruler. <laughs> and I uh, don't have to get out a marking pen. I put my tape on there. I put my foot down. And I'm just going to sew. So I see the end of my tape and reverse. And sew forward again. And then I can just take my tape off and I got my quarter inch done. So I'm beginning to really like my quarter inch tape. Now I'm getting to this corner that I've already sewn. So I'm just going to fold that up here. And I've got my pivot feature on. So, when the foot, so there we go. And use my scissors. And there you go. And all you have to do is turn it. And I'm not going to get real wild here and get it all my corners just perfect um, with your thumb and your index finger. So we'll just turn it. But I want you to see so I would put my hand in here and take my index thumb and move that seam over and then push it up and get that corner. But I'm not going to do an add on all four of them. I just want you to see when I do this and pull this tight because I did those little side things, do you see how nice that lays? And wow, I don't look at that. Poking that in and making a you know a big problem. That's beautiful. So that's a way to uh, sew squares. There's a lot of different things that we use with, with the squares and I just think the wrap corners is really nice. You can do it on collars. You can do it anywhere that you really need a point. And it was I'm, so easy to do, Kathy. That it really is. was a good tip because how many times, and I'd love to know from everybody watching, how many times are you making pillows or, I mean, there's so many things that are a square and a rectangle. <laughs> and exactly. those corners, if they don't look good, you can really tell. Right. And that's just, uh, you know, you don't think about it. You think, well, you still got all that fabric in there, but you have wrapped it. And so it stays where it needs to stay. And then with your thumb and your index finger, you turn that other one over. And so it's a point. Yeah, super easy. So it's really, really nice. Okay, so the next thing is, and I didn't, I didn't have enough stuffing to finish stuffing this, but anyway. <laughs> the, the pillow that doesn't have the dog ears. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a, a nice corner. There. Oh, yeah. That's a nice corner. Yeah. And it's, it's actually rounded, but it, oh. it is a corner. So I don't know. Cool. Hey, Kathy, I don't know what that noise was. There's like a feedback or something. Did let me see you talking oh, right now. Can, can you uh, stop for just a second? I'll be right back. Sure. All right. I'll wait just a sec for Kathy to come back. <laughs> I 
All right, so I'll just bring her out for a second until that noise goes away. I don't know if you all heard that, but anyways, we're back. That's what you, you gotta love the live shows for, right? All right, I think she's coming back. I turned the heater off, but I don't know if it's going to turn off or not. I think that's what the noise is. Okay, I still can hear it just a little bit. I'll play with your sound a little bit while you're on there. Okay. All right, so what you're gonna do when you want to make a pillow and you have your pillow form, you want to cut your fabric the size of your pillow form. So if you purchase an 18 inch pillow form, you cut your fabric 18 inches. And then when you take your half inch seam allowance, it's going to be 17. And that's going to make that pillow form puff up everything and make you have a nice full pillow. Sometimes we have sort of a, a wimpy pillow. It's not real full. And when you make the pillow, cut your pillow the same size as your form, then it makes your form a little bit bigger because of your seam allowance. And it really gives you a nice uh, shape of your pillow. So what I have here, as you can see, it's, uh, it's got rounded corners in here. So what I've done is, I took some, uh, well, this is just cutaway stabilizer that I took, and I folded it, I cut the square the same size as my pillow, and I think this was 13 by 13, and then I took it and folded it into force, and then here's my center, so the corner make the 13 the corner was about a half inch out here so you start here and then you just ease up and to a half inch and then roll around the corner and then half inch and then you should ease off to nothing so that makes sense so this this right here from here to here is 13 in the middle you have your 13 but on the corners here it's sort of rounded off and half inch in. So 13 would be out here. So you've taken off about a half inch right here and then eased up to the middle. Does that make any sense? It sure does. And we can see it really well too. Okay. And then um, after you do that, then you uh, take this and cut out your pillow. And uh, well, so I mean, <laughs> there's not much else, but you're going to, you know, do the same sort of technique that we did with the other one, where you're going to come in a half inch and sew it off, and then go around, and when you're done, sew off again, and so that will fold in, and you'll get a nice lip on there. So we'll just so fold Kathy, it in nicely. will it be since that edge is curved? Will it be a little tricky to sew off the end? Well, we're not going to sew off the end. I'll, I'll go ahead and sew. We're just going to sew around. Oh, okay. We're not going to wrap these corners. We're just going to leave these. So with this, uh, so with this one, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go to one zero one, which is left needle position. So from that position to the edge of the foot is now a half an inch. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to start on the edge. And I'm going to sew in a half an inch. And back stitch a little bit. And then come here. And then I'm just going to excuse my sloppy sewing. Sort of come around the corner here. And so it looks like you have a, a corner. You can sort of push it, you know, punch it out like a little bit of a corner because your pillow form is going to have the corner. So it's just going to sort of push it out nice. And just come around. And 
do a better job than that. But Alrighty. And turn. And so on. And then you just turn it. Now you so can so trim those corners a little bit, but it's it's a, a, a slight curve, so it's not going to be too bad. So when you get up there to those curves, you can come in here and so it's not they're not real once you turn it, they're not real drastic curves. Look at that. That's beautiful. So it's not a pointy because of that roundedness. You can that pillow will push that out. Right. So that's a that's a nice way to uh, avoid dog ears. But some people like dog ears. So then you just do the other where you would just wrap the corners and do squares. <laughs> some people like, you know, this reminds me of when I'm sewing collars on my jacket. When you get to those corners, I curve those, and it's a few not quite as drastic as that to get that nice. It's kind of you think I'm sewing well, in a curve, but you're really not. I mean, you are, exactly. but then when it comes out, it looks great. Yeah, it's like uh, it's kind of like uh, digitizing. If anybody does any digitizing, when you go to digitize a circle, you have to digitize an oval because it will sew out like a circle. Oh, interesting. So there you go. How nice that looks. Beautiful. And so here's the opening, and you just sort of press that down. Now, if you want to press it, uh, that's good. But I like, if I'm going to hand stitch it, I like to leave it like this because that gives me a little place for my needle to poke in there instead of having the, the real press down press. So I know hand stitching is not for everybody, but I do enjoy it every once in a while. So I want a little... <laughs> little lip there to to grab my needle so there you go but i like how it just sort of pulls it in there and i don't have to keep pushing it in yeah that sure is that's nice a nice edge all right well we're moving along here okay so now um we're going to go on to the mitering of the corners this is going to be exciting because that looks that quilt that you showed is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So this is this is the the corner here. You can see it there. And when I do this, now the samples that I'm going to show you are just plain fabrics. But when I we're so used to taking taking our borders. And we're going to sew with the border side up. Well, because this piecing here has a lot going on, I want to sew these strips on this way. I want my piece side up. That way, when I come to these intersections, I can have them going the right way. If I have this up, I can't see that. And this is just flat. So I'm going to sew this way. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So that way I can sort of see what's going on. So what you're going to want to do is you need a lot of extra fabric. Because if you look at this miter, you see how from here out to here is quite hey, a Kathy, can you show that 
maybe bring it up so we can see just a little better. Yeah. It's like maybe closer to the I'll camera. Kind of. I'll twist it up here. Okay. So do you want me to switch to the other camera and explain this? Yeah, that would be a good idea. Okay. Yeah, because we're just trying to see like on the machine and we can't quite see it all. So I know that there's going to be a lot of questions about this because this is a cool technique. So, all right. When she gets back up here. Okay. So, all right. We have you at the machine. Let's see if that... I've got your backside right now. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, so you can see that this is quite a distance right here. So from here to here is the extra that I needed, but you want extra just to, to be able to cut. So what you're going to do is from here, the, the size of your quilt, you're gonna take that measurement and then you're going to take the width of your border and double it and then add a few inches just so that you can breathe because you don't want to go all that trouble and have a mess. <laughs> so, um, so this one was, I think, five inches. And I can't remember what that was. So um, let me see. We'll, we'll just uh, give you a number. So let's say it's 20. And then this was five, so that's 30. So I would maybe want 33. So all these pieces would be 33. So I would sew these three pieces together and I would have four 33 inch pieces. Make sense? Yep, that makes sense. Okay, and um, this was actually a kit that I got. And it was supposed to have the regular borders on it, but it, uh, you know, the top, bottom, side, side. But somebody said that they had tried it with the miter, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I think I want to do that. And so <laughs> this was shorter than this, and this was longer. So that worked out. So the, the different strips were different lengths, and so the, the miter worked on that. So um, there you go. So now... Take this down, and um, so mitering just gives you a, a different look. It's just kind of nice to um, to give it a try. I mean, it just it just is. I think it's fun. So now we have. Sorry, I got my little fabric here. So we're going to do uh, Bambi, and this is going to be my mitered border. So I've got it pinned on here, but I am going to sew from this side. Now, what you need to do is you need to start a quarter of an inch in and stop a quarter of an inch because you need to have a space. to meet these corners up and sew. So when you mark that and you bring that down, you can't have these two sewn over each other because you can't get it flat. So you have to leave a space so that you can turn that and get it nice and flat. And I will show you that. And that that's a, another place where I use my quarter inch uh, quarter inch tape. I just I'm having fun with it. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the other screen. All right. While she's switching, and don't worry, she'll show this to you uh, step by step. She's just explaining it first. So, all right, we've got you at your machine. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. All right. So if you have if you have a Stellaire or you have a, one of the brother machines, I have the N plus foot on. And I like to use, uh, well, I've told you how I like to do the quarter inch. So I'm going to get that set up again. So the left and right shift is at seven millimeters. And um, the laser guide is at 13.5. So if you look at the 
I don't know if you can see the tape here. I got a piece of tape right here. Just barely, on yep. Foot, on your foot, if you look, you're going to see a line here, and that's where the needle is. That line lines up with the needle. So when I put this under the foot, I'm going to line up that edge of that quarter inch tape with that line on the foot. You can and on this line on the foot, and I'll have my placement of my needle because it's marked on the foot. Between the tape and my foot, I have it all set. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Yep. okay. So now I'm going to come in here and place the end of that tape right at the edge of that. You kind of want to be careful with this. I know I don't like to be careful with many things, but you do kind of want to be careful with this to make sure that it does line up because you don't want to hold. So you're going to take a couple stitches forward, and then you're going to take a couple stitches back. And I went back too much, so I may have to rip that out. So. Okay, couples. Okay, so we're going to come forward here. And then this piece of tape, this one here, gets right to the line on the foot. I'm going to reverse. Now, um, you can measure a quarter inch and mark it, uh, but I just kind of like the tape because it's it's nice and, and easy for me. And I did make a booby there, but we'll. So here you go. So then you're going to take it to the ironing board and you're going to iron towards the, the, the border. All right. Yeah, just, so just hold that down. Time. Hey, Kathy, can you hold that down just a little bit so we can see that? Do what? Can you hold that down? There we go. We get, Bring it down just a little bit. It's hard to see. There we go. Okay. Got it. Okay. So it's, it's uh, then, you, then you press it. And so you're going to have this quarter inch. On each end. Great. Yeah, we can see that real good now. Thanks. All right. So now we're going to go to this one over here that I've already got one sewn on. Okay. So right here, I do have one totally done. So I have this one already mitered. So what you're going to do, I, this one is just totally confusing, and I'm sorry, but you're going to sew the top and the bottom or the side and the side. So you're going to do opposite ends, and then you're going to add your other ones. Okay, so I am. Um, I thought I had one left here, but I, I don't know what I did with it. Okay. So I'm going to fold this down, fold this down here. Can you bring that? We can't quite see that up there, Kathy. Just bring that's it. Yeah. Part. No, I'm that's right. Fold this, fold this part down. I'm using the wrong hand. Okay, there we go. So we're going to fold that down, and then I'm going to take this and just get it out of the way by mitering it over. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then pin it down. So it's going to look like this. OK, so you've left that quarter of an inch open at the end, and now you're just folding the fabric back. <laughs> 
I, I'm not doing this angle very well. I'm sorry. That's good right there. There we go. There you go. And the reason that you're doing that is to keep it away from the back. When we sew the back, we don't want to get this in the way. So we don't want to have to rip out stitches because this got caught in, in the seam. Good idea. So um, hold on. All right. While she's moving stuff around, if you have questions, be sure to leave them below and the social team will be answering those. Uh, we are not live, so I can't bring your questions up. So we'll do the best we can. All right. So I'm going to so to sew on your strip, to pin on your strip, you're going to take your strip and fold it in half and give yourself a finger press. So now I know where the center of my strip is. Then I'm going to find the center of my quilt. And that's right here. And give that a finger press. And I'm going to take, so you're going to start sewing your strips. You're going to pin from center out. So I'm going to take these centers here and give it a pin. And then I'm going to come, this isn't uh, very big, so, all right, so. If this was my first strip, I well, I do have tape here. Let's take that tape off. So I can see where I had finished sewing right here. So I'm going to sew to there. And because I have all of this pinned out of the way here, I am not going to get this in my seam. So I'm just going to come out here. And I'm going to put a pin right here. And I'm going to stop sewing right at that quarter inch mark. All right, so then I'm going to come in the other end. right here. So pretend like this is the first one. So you're going to do this one and then this one, and then you'll add the other two sides. So I'm going to go ahead and sew here. Remember, I'm going to line up my seam with the mark on my foot and with the edge of my laser right here. So I'm going to lower my foot and I'm going to start to sew. And are you starting in a quarter of an inch again? Yes. Great. And of course, you know, when you get everything just right, your needle comes on threading. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm using a 50 weight thread. It's kind of lightweight. And uh, alrighty, here we go. I'm going to back up a little bit. So remember, I have my quilt up. Most people are going to do it the other way, but I like this. Uh, if you do what makes you smile, what makes you happy. And then I'm coming to the other end here. I'm going to stitch, and then I'm going to back stitch and use my scissors. All right. So now you would have all four sides on. 
and we'll take these pins out of here. We don't need those anymore. Oh, we need, do need those in there because that's uh, our already marked. Let me leave that one in there. I'm getting pin happy here. All right. So here's all. All four borders are on. Okay, so they're just sewn. Just to be clear, they're sewn from end to end. There's nothing has been mitered yet. Uh, and you have a quarter of an inch open at each end. All right, so this one has been mitered. So now I'll show you how uh, this one is mitered here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two pieces up here. So you really don't have to worry so much about this here, the quilt fold. Let me do this on the bed of the machine. Let me move cameras and do this on the bed of the machine. All right. So while she's moving things around, be sure to ask your questions. Very cool technique, by the way. I was looking at all three of those layers thinking, how are you going to miter each one of those individually? So I love this, Kathy. Okay. So you're going to take your quilt and turn it on the 45 degree angle. But you don't have to worry so much about this. What we're worried about is right here and here. So you want to make sure that you have all of these lined up and together. So you want to put some pins in here to make sure that these are all together, especially if you have that pieced border like I had. I wanted to make sure that each of those pieces were together so that when I mitered it, they would meet. So you kind of want to get all this uh, nice and straight there. And then you're going to take your ruler and you're going to find your 45 degree mark on here. So you have your 45 degrees. So I want it to, um, I want my 45 degrees to go this way. So I'm going to take this line here and I'm going to line it right up I'm going to line that 45 degree angle up with my seam that I did so I'm going to have my ruler right here and that 45 degree line is going to be right on my seam right on my seam here and then right at the end of where that stitching ended. So right here, and then I'm gonna mark my 45 degree line. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay, so use your rulers. So this one I can kind of keep track of, it's nice and big, uh, but move the 45 degree and move it right where you sew that seam. So it's right on your stitches. This is usually pressed down, so you're going to take your ruler and just sort of press it up and put that right on those stitches and the end of it right at the edge here, and then mark your line. Then you're going to come back to your machine. I guess I could just leave it here. And I want to put... Hey, Kathy, we can't see you at all, so you might want to go back to the other camera. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I got my big self in the side. Yeah. <laughs> Not really, but you do make a better door than a window. That's what my brother exactly. would say. <laughs> I love okay. this technique, though. All right, so I'm bringing you back. So. so now, right here, this is this is where I need to drop my needle right there so i'm going to i'm going to take right now my needle is off to the left and i want it in the center so i'm going to come to the center and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to take my laser light and i'm going to put it in the center also so i'm going to move it till it's right on top of my line so there I am, and I have my laser light light on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. 
I'll lower my foot and sink my needle and see if I'm, I'm pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and sew. And if you want to back stitch a little bit, you can. And we need to push the right button. And just sew off. And then you're going to have this extra. And you can just trim that off about a quarter of an inch. You can take it to use your rotary cutter or just cut it. I wouldn't recommend these teeny tiny little scissors, but just cut that extra off there. And then when you turn it, you've got a nice mitered corner. Oh, that's beautiful. You see it? Yeah, that's beautiful. Bring it over to your right just a little bit. To my right? Yeah, you're right. There you go. The light's a little bit better there. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. So that is how you miter the corner, and then you just finish the other two. Do you want me to do more or just... <laughs> No, that's good. We saw that. That looks great. So then when you're adding those other panels, you're just adding it outside of that? Well, what you would do is you would have your three strips already sewn. So the three strips I did on here were already sewn and I treated them as one border. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. So when I went to, when I went to, um, here to pin this together instead of just, well, let me go back to the other camera. All right. While she's switching, I think this is a pretty easy technique. At first I was thinking, how are you going to do all three of those layers? But if they're already sewn together and using that one big panel right, as yes. basically one border, look, that makes a big difference. If you look at this, This here, this border here is just like this one, but three pieces. So I just did it as one piece. So I, I sewed these three strips together and had these long strips and then sewed it on like this. Just beautiful. Great idea for that mitered corner. Yeah, I think I think the mitered corner just adds something really nice to to the quilt. And I was always afraid to do it, but uh, I got the courage, and I, I really like it. And it really isn't hard to do at all. You know, well, you know, it takes a little bit, but it's not. I can't say I did it flawlessly. I got a little few puckers, but you know, <laughs> it's just you know you have to be a little careful and not to over sew. So just get your quarter inch and set and uh, you're good to go. That's wonderful. Great tips on this one. So Kathy, you want to come back to the other camera so we can sure. see you? Sure. All right. Well, she's coming back. What was your favorite technique today? The removing the dog ears from the pillows, how to do corners, the way she showed with the little bean bag or the mitered corner, all different, of course, but I think they're all great. And you showed them Anyone, even a beginner, could learn how to do this. So, Kathy, you said you had to get the courage to do it. Well, you did that, and then you taught it very well. So now we can do it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it just really is um, just something that you don't think a lot about because you think, well, this is just easy. I'll just do that. But if you had a border print uh, to to do around the borders, doing it just the two the straight lines is not always doesn't always look great. Uh, but if you miter your corners and get that border, it really it really stands out. It's really nice. It looks so classy. I think the mitered corner is just beautiful. And it looks like it's really hard. You made it very easy there, but I, I love that. Yeah, it, it really isn't. Uh, <laughs> and I feel so silly, but I had never thought of using the quarter inch tape as measurements before. And that just made it so easy for me that I, I really <laughs> like to be searching for their quarter inch tape. <laughs> yes, exactly. That way I don't have to measure and mark because sometimes marking, it works well, but 
it's kind of thick. And so you don't, you know, you may not get the quarter inch, you may be a little bit bigger or narrower, depending on where you mark it. So with that tape, it's a quarter inch, that's it, that's there. Super easy. Well, I love the tips and techniques. Thank you so much for all of those. Uh, by the way, I have down below, you can see Brother's website. If you want to go there and see some of their products, if you, uh, maybe you have a machine, oops, oh, maybe you have a machine that the alarm went off. Maybe you have a machine that needs an update or something like that. You want to go there? Go ahead, Kathy. What were you going to say? Yeah. Just, just a, a, a reminder. Uh, if you buy an XJ2, uh, be sure to get the Art Spira app and register your machine because you get 10 free edge to edge designs in Art Spira oh. for your XJ2. It's uh, ex excellent. Oh, that's a great that's a great idea. I didn't even realize that. And also, yeah. if you have the XJ2 uh, during well, right now when we're taping. So if you're watching this five years from now, it might not be the same. But <laughs> <laughs> um, as of January 2024, register your machine on Brother's site, which I just listed below, and you will have free access to my Stellar Masterclass as well. Oh, so it fantastic. Your machine. So a lot of freebies with your machine, right? But it's Very really nice. Uh, really fun. So once I get this quilt to the backing and the batting pinned on, I'll go ahead and uh, quilt it with my um, Art Spira. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Art Spira has changed the way we embroider, the way we print, the way we design. It's it's awesome. So yeah. Kathy, thank you so much for coming on. And all of you, thank you for watching. Be sure to share your projects uh, using hashtag Brother Sews or hashtag Brother Scan and Cut. I have it listed above. And if you're looking for the schedule of what's coming up, uh, if you go to AngelaWolf.com and click on live events, I'm listing all the live events for Brother at your side. Virtually, you can save it to your calendar. You'll never miss a show. So, Kathy, Happy New Year, and it's oh. so nice to see you. Thank you. Happy New Year. All right. Bye, everyone.